Welcome back everyone, Marcelo is my name. The Niche Fragrance Collector, love niche perfumery, and more importantly, love the, I guess the exploration of something that's new, unique, different, and I'm very privileged to be here with Ali Erkekli, who is Turkish born? Uh, born in Australia, Turkish heritage, yeah. Tell me about that. My parents were born in Turkey, uh, slightly eastern Turkey, east of Ankara. Uh, they migrated in 1970 uh, to Wool uh, Wollongong in New South Wales, right. which is where I was born. Right. 73, so yeah, it was a beautiful place to grow up. I feel like your fragrances draw on your, your heritage. There are components in there that almost feel like it creeps into your fragrance. Am I right in saying that? I mean, yeah, I agree. disagree. Say, no, you're talking rubbish. <laughs> no, I agree. Yeah? Yeah, definitely. So why is that? I think it's just a natural inclination to uh, draw from uh, my background and just from what I feel, feel is interesting. So what draws you to those particular notes and those particular scent profiles? So is it something you're feeling or is it something that you're like, you know what, because I, I have this heritage, I want to put it in? No, it's usually a feeling. Yeah, it's just instinct and tends to happen. Sometimes I, don't, I can't even explain it. So. Right. Anchor Kush is, actually, I'm not even going to say. What, what does Anchor Kush mean, Ali? Uh, it's Turkish for Phoenix from the Flames or the Ashes. And why did you choose that? Tell me more about that. Without going into any background. <laughs> no, 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 no. And without going into, into any background. Why did you choose that? That's because it's very symbolic, I think. It is symbolic and it pretty much is my rise from the ashes, yeah, after betrayal, bit of greed, toxicity, and um, yeah, I'm back. And it's like a rebirth. Uh, it definitely is a rebirth. The imagery of the, you can't see it, I'll, actually, I'll put it in his B-roll. There's a great uh, image of a phoenix right here. And as I've been talking to you, Ali, I keep looking at the phoenix and I keep looking at the components to the phoenix, which is the fire that's coming up. But I also love that the phoenix has like a, like a halo, like a crown and glory on it. And, and I, it's very, very symbolic, very symbolic. So why do you have that image there? I mean, apart from the fact that it's a really good print. Uh, it's a, just a reminder of this rebirth, how it all happened. Mm. And yeah, you grow from strength to strength. Mm. In this journey, one of the very first fragrances that you, from the early part of your journey, that got noticed internationally. Can you tell me more about this and let's have a spray? Uh, it's absent minded. Yeah, it was very early in the, in the piece. I'm going to put on my skin. Skin? Further Boom. Down. Right here. Two or three? Two, please. Oh. <laughs> three, again. Very aromatic, isn't mm. it? I love how uh, airy it is and mm. how it lifts. For me, the licorice note, just all the fennel that's in yeah. there, just like, bah, just explodes. That, it, especially if you like it. If you don't yeah. like licorice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I, I love, I mean, one, I enjoy eating it. I mean, the, the taste. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, but as a fragrance, as a, as a, as a note, it's mm. vibrant, it's... It's medicinal, but it also has its aromatic quality to it. What motivated you to create this? Uh, just the smell of uh, real ab absinthe, I'd say, and um, the story behind it, absinthe itself, mm. how, how it did become outlawed, taboo almost. I just love the smell of it. It's You're very intrigued. aromatic, yeah, really intrigued by it. Mm. And yeah, a little bit of a like a charming backstory to it as well. How it uh, evolved in Europe mm. and yeah, a lot of the artistic types partook in it and yeah, it's just interesting. Because it was very hallucinatory. Hall um, yeah, hallucinogenic, yeah. Yeah, they, they, they would, I think it was called the, the Green Fairy or something. That's it. Like, yeah, that yeah. they would just like... Pretty much conjure up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now, you got noted or noticed on this particular fragrance. Can you tell me more about that? Uh, yeah, I was nominated as a finalist in the Arden Olf Olfaction Awards. It was in 2020. Right. A little bit unexpected, early in my rebirth. So how did this come about? I mean, did you submit a fragrance? Do you get nom? How, how does it work? Yeah, you submit fragrance. You can submit up to three. Had to have been released during that year. There was about, I think, three, four hundred entries. And yeah, I got in the top ten. 
pleasantly surprised. This is a world competition? Yes. You get judged by some of your peers, some established brands, and yeah, it was That would be intimidating, but... Uh, no, not really. No. I love it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, good on you, mate. When do we break down the notes? Top notes are sweet fennel, anise, wormwood, and absinthe. Heart notes are patchouli, woods notes, cashmere woods, and the base notes are oak moss and amber. How I constructed it was I did want a, a, a fresh blast of um, that licorice note. Mm. The fennel, the wormwood, and it's sort of like a little bit punchy, but it does calm, it, calm itself down and... Yeah, all the other facets start rising as the licorice note drops off. Because mm. I'm getting the patchouli. I'm getting that that mm -hmm. slight camphorous, that... that, that uh... Okay, not everyone picks up the patchouli. Oh, well, I'm getting a, like, I'm getting like a... Um, oh, that mus not mustiness, the musty, musty yeah. component of okay. it. Okay. So when you first spray, that licorice fennel is very pronounced. Yes. And, and I remember when I first experienced this, I thought, oh my gosh. I mean, all I was getting was this licorice fennel note. But give it, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes, and it really comes down from there. And those other facets really, as you mentioned before, begin to emerge and come forward. Yeah, I intended to make it like a bit of a punch in the face. Right. And like worked. To, fool, to fool the wearer. Yeah. And then, yeah, don't make it say, you know, shouldn't make up your mind. Too quickly. I like that. So you did it on purpose, purpose. just to, yeah, just to just to destabilize us. Yes. But why would you do that? Why would you do that as a person? Who does that as a person? A masochist, maybe. <laughs> oh, like a little bit of uh, trickery and right, yeah, bit of fun and games. How does it work? So when we read these notes, and this is a question I've had in my mind for a while. So when you read these notes, how is it that you can program? these notes to emerge at the time that they do you know let me let me, okay. let me let me expand this even further because i've had this question asked and that is the, these are molecules these are independent molecules that are doing their own thing but how is it that you can create such a strong opening on the fennel and everything else but then it, it, it literally comes back. It doesn't go away. So it doesn't, it's not like it evaporates. You, I can still detect, but yeah. it's now in the background and all these other ones are coming forward. It's almost like uh, I've stepped aside as a character and um, the others are ushered in. How do you do this? How is this done? Basically, the dosages that you use, the, the volumes, uh, trial and error. You can't be too heavy-handed with it. And yeah, you just work it out. But see, you're not trained in this area not at so all. you don't have the schooling you just taught yourself how did you do this i mean how did i mean i guess there's trial and error but there comes to a point where there's more error than than success why well, i would think but obviously not in your case no not really usually when um i make up my mind and i had a like compose a uh a scent it tends to work pretty well i sometimes get it slightly wrong but it tends to retalk. work really well for you if yeah. I put, if I did it, I'd make a mess of it. I think. I, uh, I, I, I know. So. Yeah, I believe so. Yeah, <laughs> I would. So why is it that you have this knack? This is, I guess, what I. I'm not sure. You're really gifted. Don't... You're gifted with it. Possibly. I mean, this is awesome. I think because over time you become so familiar with the different components, you know uh, how each one will act. If if some are um, bit part players. Some are like very bombastic, some that do take over. So you, you, you learn all that over time. It is a little bit of trial and error, but if you're cluey enough, you, you, you can sort of piece it together. And also, so it also sounds like it's something that's inbuilt with you instinctively. You know, it's like... Yeah, I'd say so, yeah. Creativity has always come a little bit easy. For so, you? For me. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. How long did it take you to create this particular fragrance? This one was two versions, I think. I made two versions. I think it was an hour. <laughs> I knew he was going to say that. <laughs> one hour. Boom. I mean, it takes me longer to... Beginner's luck, maybe? <laughs> takes me longer to make an omelette than it, take, <laughs> than it took this man to create something that was nominated in the Art and Olfaction Awards. Awards yeah. I'm so proud of that. 
if you haven't had a chance to smell something unique, so this is very early on. This is like what number? Uh, second one, I think. The okay. Second release. Second fragrance within the Anchor Kush in that rising of the phoenix. The second fragrance that Ali created. If you haven't had a chance to test this out, go out, put it on skin. Um, it is going to surprise you. That opening is very, very unique. But as we've been talking, allow it to settle, allow it to evolve. And before you know, you've got a fragrance that is very distinct, very unique. <laughs> we'll see you guys all on the next episode.